Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another Red Gaming Ted.com video. You may remember just a few, at, well, for a few videos now, I've been mentioning that the Xbox 360 had a slightly superior GPU, but I've been doing some comparison specs in preparation, of course, for the PS4 and Xbox 720 showdowns. And a few people have messaged me or wrote on Facebook and said, hey, why is it that the PS4, sorry, PS3 um, loses out to the Xbox 360? Why is the Xbox 360's GPU slightly better? Um, and, of course, I'm, I endeavour to answer the question, and so I did write a few responses, but I've also decided to put out a video as well. So, before we really heavily get into the, the nitty-gritty of the specs, I want to quickly mention about the resolutions. Now, a common misconception is that all games on the Xbox 360 or PS3 run at either 720 or 1080p. And that's not really the case. They're actually upscaled. Now, in case you're wondering what that means, it basically means that the system itself takes whatever resolution the game runs at and then outputs it, in other words, upscales it to the resolution that you select. In other words, it puts it onto the TV like that. Um, now, obviously, it does a lot better job than, say, if you were to take an image from Photoshop and, let's say, you were to crop it all the way down. Let's say, for example, you were to take a 1080p image and then, you know, you shrink it all the way down to, like, you know, a third of the size and then you were to make it all the way back up to 1080p again. Obviously, you're going to lose a lot of quality, and that's not quite what the Xbox 360 does or anything like that um, in terms of the loss. But what I am saying is it's definitely not natively 720p or 1080p. There are some titles that are, however... But there are also quite a smattering of those that are not. And we're going to give a few examples right now. One example would be Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Of course, a very popular title on both the PS3 and Xbox 360. The Xbox, sorry, the PS3 version runs at 880 by 720. And then indeed, there are dynamic instances of even lower resolution, which would be 832 by 624. And there is actually post AA on that as well. Now, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, however, on the Xbox 360 fares a little bit better, a hair better, and that would be 880 by 720. However, there is two times AA on that, which does help smooth things up. Now, Crisis 3, which is even more modern and, of course, is very graphically impressive. On the Xbox 360, it's running 1152 by 720, and that's with SMA8T2X. Uh, and, of course, the PlayStation 3 version uh, runs at slightly resolution, lower resolutions. Not my much, I'll admit, but it's 1024 by 720, and once again, the same, it's the same, should I say, SMAA. So, why is it? And there are other examples, but I'm not going to go into every single one of these. So, why is it that the PS3 typically um, fares slightly worse? Well, not all of the games, of course, are sub-720p. Dead Space 3, for example, on both systems runs at 720p, true 720p, that would be 12, 7, uh, sorry, 1280 by 720 and both have FXAA, which is actually an improvement, by the way, from the original Dead Space 2, which is the same resolution but with no AA. So why is all of this? Well, it comes down to a couple of reasons. No matter what way you want to look at it, um, Xbox 360 has a small number of advantages. Um, basically in mostly the architecture. One of those would be the 10 megabytes of embedded ED RAM on the system. Now this is extremely fast memory and allows the Xbox 360 to do quite a few effects almost for free as it's not interfering with the memory utilization of the system for a start. It also means it's got a lot more memory bandwidth to play with which effects like AA, you know, with um, anthropic anti-aliasing and various other bits and bobs. Sorry, I'm trying to also organize my notes at the same time, which is not being very indicative of helpfulness. The only problem with doing these videos is it does take quite a bit of notage. Anyway, um, we're going to quickly talk about the memory for a moment of both systems. I don't really want to talk too much about the other specifications of either system, but invariably I'll have to talk about them just a little bit. Now, you guys know that the Xbox 360, it does indeed have a unified memory of 512 megabytes, clocked to 700 megahertz, and 32 megabytes are used for the operating system. Now, the PS3 
is a little bit different. It has 256 for the GPU, 256 for the CPU, and 50 megabytes is being used by the operating system. So once again, you can see that PS3 has a slightly higher overhead now. Of course, there has to be memory reserved. Why? Because otherwise the programmers of the games or developers of the games would simply use all the memory and it wouldn't really work with the operating system. Just how your PC needs a certain amount of memory to say load Windows and the same for your phone or whatever device. Okay, that makes sense and you will understand that. Now in terms, in terms of actual raw physical horsepower, the Xbox 360's GPU does have a slight advantage. The RSX, also known as the GPU, which is powering the PS3, um, is running 24 pixel shaders and 8 vertex shader pipelines. Now, these shaders run, or should I say, this clock speed runs at 550 megahertz and performs around 74.8 billion shade operations a second, which is a hell of a lot of shader operations per second, I'm sure you'll agree. Now, the Xbox 360's chip, also known as, in at least code name, as Xenos, is a little bit different. Um, it's only clocked to 500 megahertz, which might seem on average, or might seem like, oh my goodness, it's far worse. Well, why is it more powerful? Well, it has 48 unified shader pipelines and performs um, 192 shader operations per clock. And basically that means it's got 96 billion shade operations per second, which is obviously quite a bit higher to say the least. Now if you guys want to do some reading on this, you'll find some um, people who have said that the RSX and the Cell have been extremely difficult to really develop for on the PlayStation 3. And that's not the only reason as well, there have been a few other technical challenges as well. As it turns out, the GPU on the PS3 is probably the weaker point of the system, and the cell is actually very strong. Indeed, some of the actual functionality of the graphics that can actually be farmed off to the GPU on the on the PS3, and basically can use its SPUs to try to alleviate some of the stress. Now, a lot of the really, really big titles, the exclusives, should I say, for the PS3 do this. Now, the CPU on the Xbox 360, on the other hand, can do some of the same things. For example, Alan Wake's light lighting and post-processing was actually being done on the CPU, but it's not quite to the same level as the RSX. So the RSX on the Xbox on the PS3 definitely helps quite a bit. So in that respect the PS3 does have a slight advantage. Now what you're going to notice as well, if you've been listening quite carefully, is that the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 720 were not rendering internally at 720p for a lot of the titles. Now that isn't to say all the titles. Now, there are certain titles that actually do run natively in 720p, as I mentioned Dead Space, However, others are running at like 1024 by 720 by 76A and so forth. Why is that? I'm going to quickly explain this as well. Um, it's as simple as saying that it puts less strain on the GPU. And because of the less strain on the GPU, they're able to you know, put out better effects. Now, if you really want an example of this, there are a couple of ways we can go about to uh, explain it. And that would be anamorphic widescreen. Now, if you're a film buff, you're probably going to know this a lot more. Or if you're, say, highly into video editing, you'll know about it. If not, if you own a Doom 3 type of engine game, those would be, say, Prey, Quake Wars, Quake 4, Doom 3, of course. You can go ahead and start messing around with the resolution options as well as the aspect ratio in game. I'm not going to really go through the whole process in this because it will take me a while and it's it's just better for you to actually see it firsthand. Suffice to say that it's not very difficult to understand. The, way, the easiest way to explain it however, a brief summary would be the image is squeezed into the rendered resolution but is then stretched to the proper 16 by 9 presentation. So I 
think that just about is all I need to say on that particular one. I know that's maybe not as clear as I could be, but I could be here for quite a while explaining about anamorphic widescreen. What I'd recommend you do is you probably do some googling yourself, there's probably some good wiki articles and so forth, which will probably provide a lot more information and uh, diagrams and so on rather than me having to explain it all to you painfully in a video. Now because of the actual architecture of the GPU as well as the frame buffer that I've already mentioned, the 10 megabyte buffer, it's actually a lot easier for the Xbox 360 to handle a multi-sampling, in other words anti-aliasing of on the system itself. Indeed, in reality, it's easy to say that the PS3 should be able to do it. Now remember that the, the actual GPU of the PS3 is for all intents and purposes the G, G G47000 series, uh, slightly cut down. And it does basically mean that the ROPs of the card are capable of handing two times multi samples per pixel clock easily. So in a situation where there's unlimited memory bandwidth, or should I say that bandwidth is not an issue at all. In other words, in reality, if someone was to produce a very basic scene, two times MSAA is free. In other words, it doesn't cause any difficulty whatsoever extra for the cards. Reality, however, of course, is very different from, you know, theory. Theory is not like that. In, theory, in reality, the 22 gigabytes per second of bandwidth is a huge issue for the uh, frame buffer. And doing stuff like 4 times MSAA is extremely costly and would actually do things such as halving the fill rates compared to MSAA. And you'll also be seeing double a memory bandwidth consumption as well, which is obviously very bad. Xenos, on the other hand, has the ROPs are designed to handle four multi samples per pixel per cycle, and all full fill rates are up to full speed, and the Z only fill rates are also double pumped. So, for all intents and purposes, the CPU of the PS3 does help somewhat um, for the GPU functionality of the PS3, but it once again it has to be programmed specifically. Now that isn't to say that the PS3 of course is far worse, it just means it's harder to actually access. And bear in mind that some of the later PS3 titles do look extremely good, for example God of War, um, Uncharted and so on, it just is a little bit trickier, unfortunately. Now I've also read little bits on the PlayStation 3 not upscaling quite as well as the Xbox 360. Um, it seems that the pure video scaler on the GPU is not that great for horizontal or specific front buffer resolutions, but I haven't really read that much up about it and I don't want to give you guys information that I don't 100% know because that's unfair to both systems. If you are willing to do some googling yourselves, I thought I'd throw it out there and you can do that yourselves and then you can comment on the video by all means. Anyway, I I think that's just about all that I'm really willing to do on this particular video because I'd be here for quite a while. Um, believe it or not, it takes quite a while to do this kind of research. So um, everyone, of course, right now is really pumped up about the next generation of consoles. And of course, I'll be throwing it all out there. Oh, by the way, um, a few people have also asked me about the Xbox 720's CPU. Um, and you know how it stacks up compared to the the CPU of the PS4. And I'll be honest with you, no one knows right now. Um, as of the date of recording this video, the specifications of the Xbox 720 haven't really been confirmed yet, and we don't know exactly what they've done on the die for the CPU. In fact, we don't even really know if it is going to be the AMD Jaguar. We surmise it will be, but we don't 100% know that it's confirmed that yes, this will be the AMD Jaguar. The second point I'd like to make is that the CPU on the PS4 has not been completely uncovered in terms of the exact modifications. In other words, uh, let's go with, say, the PS3. We know that the PS3 has had some specific thing done for it on, say, the GPU. And we know the same thing is going to be the same on the CPU of the PS4. 
So we don't know all of those yet and they will be no doubt announced somewhat on the developers con conference, I'm sorry. And we also know of course that in a few months time after the system's launched we're going to know a hell of a lot more about it as people start dissecting it. So anyway, I think that just about covers this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, once again, uh, if you've got any questions, you can message, leave a message on Facebook. To be honest with you, I'm probably better at responding on Facebook because I can usually access it at work and so on. And so I'm more likely to see the message. Um, not always able to do it on the, the YouTube. I do try. But if you don't hear from me, stalk the Facebook RGT account and I'll probably get back to you as well within a day or two anyway. So anyway, take care of yourselves and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.